in a matter of a week, from the security review to banning new users to removing the platform from app stores, Xi Jinping has escalated his reprimanding of the rideshare company Didi and is not stopping. Early in the morning on Saturday, July 10th, the Chinese regime announced removing additional 25 apps owned by Didi's parent company. People are speculating about Xi's motives and intention. The Didi drama is, in fact, an important indicator of the ongoing infighting among various Chinese political factions, especially with the CCP's 20th National Congress approaching next year. Multiple factions are entangled in power struggles. Hi, I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. Since its establishment nine years ago, Didi has raised a total of $22.6 billion in capital. Its shareholding structure has become quite complex after some 20 rounds of financing and two mergers. In my last video, I talked about how Didi's all-star financial backers helped it beat Uber in China and rise to dominance. The powerful princelings and their red families factional political struggles with Xi Jinping is the driving force of this drama. Princelings refer to the descendants of prominent Chinese Communist Party leaders. They control many private and state-owned enterprises. For example, CICC Alpha is part of a leading Chinese investment firm, China International Finance Corporation, and its former CEO, Levin Zhu, is the son of former Chinese Premier Zhu Rongji. Ping'an, the largest Chinese insurer that ranked number 7 in the global Fortune 500 lists, is closely related to the family of former Premier Wen Jiabao. Both CICC Alpha and Ping'an are major investors of Didi. China Life is the largest Chinese life insurance company, and Citic Capital is part of China's largest state-run conglomerate, China International Trust Investment Corporation. Both are shareholders of Didi and linked to Liu Lefei, the son of Liu Yunshan, a former Politburo Standing Committee member. Liu Lefei has served as the CEO of China Life and is currently the chairman of Citic Industrial Fund. Like Levin Zhu, Liu Lefei is also a princeling, but he belongs to the Jiang Zemin's faction, Xi Jinping's biggest political enemy. Speaking of Jen's faction, the former communist leader's grandson, Alvin Jiang, is also an investor of Didi. His private equity firm, Boyu Capital, is on the board. Boyu has been behind Alibaba and Jack Ma. Boyu is known for its 2012 investment in Alibaba, which helped Jack Ma buy back half of Yahoo's 40% stake in his company. It also invested a total of $18.5 billion in Ant Group in 2016 and 2018. Jack Ma's close ties to the Jiang Zemin's faction are the reason for his recent tribulation with Xi, resulting in the suspension of Ant's IPO and the $2.6 billion fine. And another Chinese tech giant that flourished under Jiang Zemin is Tencent, the maker of WeChat. The fact that Alibaba, Tencent, and Ant Group, in addition to Jen's grandson, are all behind Didi, certainly makes Xi Jinping no fan of Didi. From the very beginning, he has been embroiled in a fight with the Jiang Zemin's faction. The enormous wealth that his political enemies have amassed and their alliance with foreign institutions are threatening to Xi. Xi Jinping's ascension to power was a compromise between his two predecessors, Hu Jintao and Jiang Zemin. When Hu was the communist leader, Jiang was still calling the shots, and Hu was a mere figurehead. It was widely known that Jiang was corrupt and Hu was weak. When it was time to pick the next leader, the two couldn't agree on each other's choice of heir. Xi Jinping became a natural compromise and succeeded Hu to become the sixth Chinese communist leader. However, Jiang had his plan to remove Xi Jinping and replace him with his chosen heir, Bo Xilai. Various media outlets outside China have reported that Jiang Zemin and Bo Xilai organized an attempted coup with help from two military generals, Xu and Guo. The two sides engaged in a life and death fight. In the end, 
She sent Bo Xilai to prison for life on corruption charges, and Bo's wife got a suspended death sentence for the death of British businessman Neil Haywood. Xi Jinping launched a massive anti-corruption campaign to clean out Jiang's faction, which led to the arrests of over 200,000 government officials across China. Behind the facade of anti-corruption is an intense political battle, with Xi sweeping out the network of officials loyal to Jiang Zemin. During the 20 years Jiang was in power, many Western companies entered China based on relations built with Jiang and his loyalists. These mutually benefiting relations have made Jiang and his followers exceptionally wealthy. They became powerful both inside and outside China. In cleaning out the Jiang faction, she had to dismantle Jiang's business relations with multinational companies. One such company was Microsoft, which began operating in China in 1995. Jiang personally handled the company's entry into China. Bill Gates' relationship with Jiang was highly promoted in state media. Jiang's son, Jiang Mianhen, owns 50% of MSN China's website business through his company, Shanghai Alliance Investment. In July 2014, under Xi's regime, the authorities suddenly opened an antitrust investigation of Microsoft. In November of that year, Microsoft was accused of tax evasion, the first time for a major foreign corporation, and ordered to pay $140 million in back taxes and interest. As a strong signal of Microsoft changing fortunes, the day after the tax evasion ruling, the Financial Times reported that 1 million employees of the state-run China National Petroleum Corp previously chaired by the prominent and now arrested Jiang ally Zhou Yongkang, will be shifting their email accounts from Microsoft to a domestic provider. Another company that flourished in China under Jiang was British pharmaceutical giant GlasgowSmithKline. In 2007, GSK was named most progressive foreign company in Tianjin, by the way, most progressive means most pro-communist. However, GSK's fate changed soon after she came to power. In September 2014, GSK was found guilty of bribery and fined nearly half a billion dollars, the largest corporate fine ever issued in China. Former GSK China chief Mark Riley was given a three-year suspended sentence and faced deportation. Wang Fengping, an official in Jiang's corner in Shanghai, was sentenced for corruption and bribery in the GSK case. In the same year, semiconductor company Qualcomm was under antitrust investigation. Chinese IT Times Weekly once revealed that Qualcomm hired the son of Gu Yuxiu, who was a close friend and teacher of Jiang Zemin, as a consultant who helped secure Qualcomm's successful introduction of CDMA into China in 2001. However, Qualcomm paid a big price for this alliance. On February 10, 2015, the company agreed to pay $900 million fine to settle with the Chinese regime. In a media interview, its then-CEO Paul Jacobs said that he really didn't know why the company was investigated. I don't know if Qualcomm, Microsoft, and GSK have figured out by now that they paid a big price by being caught in the middle of the CCP's infighting. This should be a lesson for multinational companies doing business in China. Your most substantial connection into China can one day become your biggest liability. Your investment is like gambling with a group of gangsters who are constantly engaged in a bloody fight. Being a princeling himself, Xi Jinping was supported by many princelings in the early days. They see Xi as one of them. Jiang Zemin, on the other hand, was a leader most despised by the people. During Jiang's rule, systemic corruption became an epidemic in China and started spreading to the West. Not only was he the biggest beneficiary of the Tiananmen Square massacre and came to power because of his hardline position on the students, Jen is also responsible for the persecution of the spiritual practice Falun Gong, 
which has caused China tremendous physical, emotional, and financial pain. However, as she was closing in on Jiang, he backed down, and that has proven to be catastrophic for Xi. He is now feeling pressure coming from all sides. The hardliner faction wants to take him down. The reformer faction sees him as the problem. The West views him as a Mao-style dictator. The political struggle in a communist regime isn't about winning or losing. It's about life and death. As Xi Jinping tightly holds on to the communist apparatus to maintain power, he inevitably has become a dictator. The CCP's 20th National Congress will be on stage in another year, and it will be time for the CCP to redistribute power. The DD episode is only a prelude to a whole drama to be played out from now until then. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll bring you more updates.